request Dr. Karkhanis to please take over. Uh, prevention of foot edema after foot and ankle trauma. So we take it for granted that the foot has been treated properly. And now the problem is how to prevent foot edema. So for prevention, the first thing is that the plaster must be given in full dorsiflexion to contain the dome of the talus. Equinus is the main cause of foot edema post-trauma. The second thing is the patient must walk on the plaster with the normal foot crossing the affected foot, as is seen in this video. So walker, affected foot, and normal foot must cross the affected foot. This is very important. Walker, affected foot, normal foot must cross the affected foot. This is very important. Wrong and the right way of walking. Now we'll see this patient walking. On the right side is the injury. And he has got edema. But he is not walking in the style which I have said. And that is the normal foot must cross the affected foot. See what is happening and how he corrects it. So now he's walking, but the left foot is not crossing the right foot. So there is edema that will prevail. But once he is corrected and once he's made to turn, now he'll cross right and the left must cross. Right and the left must cross. This is the way that the foot edema you can get rid of. Next, after walking, the patient must walk effortlessly, effortlessly on the plaster with non-affected foot, once again crossing the affected foot at all times. See how he walks, like he has got no plaster. This is the time when you remove the plaster. When will you remove the plaster? When will you remove? The patients keep on asking. You ask him to walk in this manner, and that is the time when you remove the plaster. Now, once you remove the plaster, there's a crepe bandage. How long you will keep the crepe bandage? Till the edema subsides, and till the wrinkling sign comes. One month, two months, three months, that's not the question. The edema must go. And what is the method of tying the crepe bandage? Don't take the heel. This was taught to me by Dr. late Dr. Joshipura. No creasing, and don't take the heel from morning 8 a.m. to evening 10 p.m. Crepe bandage, crepe bandage, and crepe bandage, till the edema subsides, and the patient must walk. No creasing, don't take the heel. Dr. Joshipura had failed all of us in the exam in the war in 1975 because we took the heel. No creasing. And that is the correct method of tying crepe bandage. Next, how the patient must walk. And you will see if the patient comes with edema and you make the patient walk in your clinic with heel strike, stands, heel off and toe off, the normal foot crossing the affected foot. If you do that, as the patient walks out of your clinic, the edema is gone. It will be reducing. So see how to walk. Heel strike, other way crossing, heel off, toe off. Heel strike, stands, heel off, toe off. That is how one must walk. The heel must strike. Once again, I'll show you. Heel strike, stands, heel off, toe off. The other foot must cross the affected foot. This is very important. Because the foot pump can work only when the patient walks in this manner and not in equinus. So I'll show you some cases. This is a smashed plafond. You will see how bad this fracture is. And this has been anatomically reduced and fixed. And this is the post-op. No equinus while giving plaster. And you see the patient has got some dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Some of the movements may be taking place at the midfoot. But absolutely, with this profound injury of plafond fracture, there is not much of edema. And this is the same patient, plantigrade foot, the success to post-trauma. Veins, you can see, no edema. And you can see wrinkles over here. With such a bad fracture, this patient has got less foot edema. Another case, degloved fractures with external fixator. Once again, I must stress that you have to put this external fixator in full dorsiflexion. You give an equinus to the patient, the patient is not going to walk well, the patient is going to have foot edema. Lastly, this is a compound contaminated talus fracture. This patient came from Congo, Congo, very badly contaminated 
the body was missing, the head was there. So we removed the head and this patient has got no talus and this is the external fixator, but still you can see that there is no equinus. So I have done the calconeo tibial fusion using the calendrushio clamps. The calendrushio clamps are available in Mumbai with Uma Surgical. They are the only people who have, that's why I'm mentioning. So we have done this, calconeo tibial fusion, and now I've given him the plaster and see how the patient walks. Once again, same, walker, affected foot, normal foot must cross. This is the most important message that I want to give in this presentation. That is how he keeps on walking. And then with the plaster, we send this patient. He was from West Bengal, and he went with that. I don't have the further follow-up, but at least he's gone walking on the plaster in this manner. Walker, affected foot, normal foot must cross the affected foot. So what are the conclusions? Plaster of Paris in dorsiflexion, walk on the plaster with walking aid, non-affected foot must cross the affected foot, walk without aid in a similar manner, and that is the non-affected foot must cross the affected foot, crepe bandage at least until such time that the foot will show no edema and wrinkle sign is positive, and walk with, this is most important, and that is heel strike, stance, heel off, toe off, the other foot must cross the affected foot. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Karkane, sir. Uh, you can continue your another topic, uh, another one. Uh, anybody wants to ask uh, questions on that? or a Any questions from the house? Martin? Yes, Dr. Kulkarni. So what is your experience with the air brace that they use? That also is good. That also is very good. The, if the patient can afford it, it's costing 7,000 and 8,000, but it is very good. I agree on that. Uh, sir, in spite of all these, if patient has edema uh, persistent, then is there any uh, role of drugs uh, to reduce such edema? Any uh, drugs? See, there is no inflammation there. And what we have at our, in our table is anti-inflammatory drugs. These are COX-2 and COX-1 inhibitors. And when there is no inflammation at the end of the treatment, I don't think that is going to work. The only thing to my mind which works is a dorsiflexion and heel strike, stance, heel off and toe off gait and other leg must cross the affected leg. Like they promote some drugs, Depodime or something, so does they work really or? No, I don't think so. The main thing that works is I think a crepe bandage. That you must tie from morning 8 a.m to evening 10 p.m. Thank you, sir, but uh, I think the post, pla yeah. Yeah. Uh, post plaster removal decompression syndrome is one entity in which there is definitely a edema over the limb or foot when you remove the plaster, allowed to walk, but this is an, uh, again two types. One is due to the pathological due to trauma or another is due to the physiology of the foot. So physiology of the foot can be corrected by the elevating the limb, keeping continuous as he is seeing by the crab bandage, definitely. But it is much that some type, some extent of the edema and uh, limit of the edema has to be there after removal of the plaster or even post-surgical. Yes, sir. What you yes, uh, 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 Dr. Karkhanis, thanks for enlightening us on the calendicio clamp. I would like to know is when would you... At after what stage would you apply the plaster and the calendicio clamp? How much time do you, or along with the clamp, you apply the plaster and make no, it no. work? You have to get fusion first, and that case which I showed, the talus was missing. So we have done a calcaneo uh, tibial fusion. Once that fusion takes place, I gave walking plaster after three months. Not with that clamp, no. He yeah, can't walk. But because can he'll break the, he'll break all the things because of weight bearing. <coughs> and so uh, we'll go to the next session yeah. because time up now. Yeah. A comment I want to pass. Since you have taken the name of Dr. Joshi Bura, <laughs> I have worked with him and he has said that never take the bandage up to down, down to up, up to down, down to up. It should be down to up all the way yeah. and with even pressure. Yeah, that's and right. And your way of applying was little misunderstanding. Okay, so we go to the next thing and that is, I have various okay, things, the shoulder dislocation, rotator cuff ties, etc. So we'll go one after the other. Most of them are videos. So, Cocker's method, 
In Cocker's method, I have never failed. Hundreds of shoulder dislocations I have done. No anesthesia, only in the OPD. And here we have Dr. Mahapatra who is doing that. And that is the method which Dr. A.J. Thakur showed us. And that is Cocker's method. The elbow must remain held to the side of the body at all times. That is the most important thing. If you abduct, it will not reduce. So that's how it is. Let's see how I do it. This patient has got a dislocation on the right side. <coughs> so now, slowly but carefully, the elbow will be stuck on the side of the body. That's a must. Subsequent to that, the patient will rotate. You don't rotate. The patient will have pain and spasm. The patient will rotate. You will just assist the shoulder into external rotation till the forearm becomes parallel to the floor. So he is doing it. I am not doing anything. You ask him to do. You ask him to do. You assist. You don't let the forearm go back. The elbow is stuck to the side of the chest at all times. And once the shoulder is parallel to the floor, most of the anterior dislocation of the shoulders will reduce. If not, then you will flex the shoulder and internally rotate. It has reduced. He touched it, so it has reduced. The forearm is parallel to the floor. It is stuck. But if it is not reduced, you can do flexion and internal rotation. And this was published by Dr. A.J. Thakur in JBGS when he was at Cooper Hospital. And that's how I got it. And I've been doing these presentations at many places. The last time I did, was at Iocon in Goa. Rotator cuff tendinosis and minor tears. Develop the infraspinal disc by blocking external rotation. Develop the subscapularis by blocking internal rotation. Develop the long head of the biceps by blocking shoulder flexion. And develop the supraspinal disc by blocking initial abduction. If you do this and you tease the patient, and the patient has got a painful arch syndrome, and minor tears of the rotator cuff, the patient will go and leave your OPD without any pain, and that's a promise. And how we do it? Strengthening the infraspinatus. So she is blocking acceleration. Blocking subscapularis, internal rotation. Infraspinatus. Subscapular, she's blocking. Now she'll block the long head of biceps by shoulder flexion. And now supraspinal is blocking initial shoulder abduction. The patient, I promise, will leave your OPD without much pain in painful arc syndrome. Don't ever give steroid injections. They will damage the rotator cuff. Frozen shoulder. The idea is to stretch the inferior glenohumeral ligament and the inferior capsule by slow wall rubbing exercises for 10 minutes. Now what happens is when patient goes to the physio, he does it for 15 minutes, that's it. No, you do that for 10 minutes, four times a day for a period of one month. Then stretch the anterior and the posterior capsule by doing the butterfly exercises four times a day in total 10 minutes. So we'll accommodate the butterfly as well as wall rubbing. Now how to do it, I will show you in the next two videos and how not to do it. So now you have to do it very slowly. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. This is the speed. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Because he has to do it for 10 minutes and four times a day. You ask him to do it in a fast manner, he'll get tired, he'll get pain, he'll abandon. Do that. I have yet to refer a patient to physiotherapist. And no patient ever has come back with early or moderate frozen shoulder unresolved. So the next thing is butterfly exercises. After he does that for one month, you have asked him to do the butterfly exercise. Same thing, slow. <clears throat> okay, so let's see the speed. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four
थ्री फोर फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन दिस इज द स्पीड इफ इट डज पास हिल गेट पेन एंड हिल स्टॉप डूइंग इट now this is a demo he should not stretching the inferior capsule as i told you but this is too fast this is just a demo he should not do it that fast he must count 1 2 3 4 5 it's over so that is too fast this is the way that you should not ask the patient to do because you have to ask him to do it slowly and in 10 minutes four times a day no patient has ever come back to me ha ah, dekha sir after four years back we had come with frozen shoulder or something else etc yes okay tennis elbow this is the weakness of the extensor carpi radialis brevis use of thera bands to strengthen the forearm muscles as will be shown in the video the method is applicable to vast number of housewives and office staff not in machine operators laborers and gym person these are excluded but 95% of your patients will be ladies will be working at home and they will be relieved as they leave your opd they will have no pain in the lateral epicondyle of the elbow how to do that theraband stretch of the therabands elbow should be straight no bending of the elbow theraband available in all sport shops three exercises these are enough this he has to do 20 times subsequently the wrist is held tight biceps and lastly forearm and lastly forearm you don't do dorsiflexion because it is a injured extensor carpi radialis brevis so just the forearm flexors this is enough the patient will be relieved of tennis elbow pain early osteoarthritis of the knee genuvarum causing medial medial, medial meniscus degeneration ibernation of the cartilage you all know patient goes into a attitude of fixed flexion deformity the patella the patient presses the patella down to lock the knee in a fixed flexion deformity this is the beginning of the end of early osteoarthritis the idea is to get rid of the fixed flexion deformity and how do you do it static quads hmm yeah press hold for 5 seconds 1 2 3 4 5 press 1 2 3 4 5 the patient must hold to get rid of this fixed flexion deformity the patient will walk out of your clinic with much less pain in early osteoarthritis of the knee this is how you do it subsequent to that don't teach any more exercises the other exercise is sitting at the edge of the bed this exercise comes later on but same thing she should hold for 5 seconds that is very important 1 2 3 4 5 if you teach both the patient is confused you get rid of the fd and the patient is cured of the problem and this is the same so i'll skip this video <coughs> and calcaneus spur what is calcaneus spur the spur is because of pull of the plantar fascia so what are we giving steroid for you stretch the plantar fascia and also retrocalcaneus spur it is the tight tendo achilles so how do you stretch it you see this is a tight structure and this also a tight structure and this is the last slide you stretch it and what is the method you give a board this board is 1 inch it is a metatarsal the heel must touch the floor the heel must touch the wall and the knee should be straight you do that for 10 minutes every day very simple at home and next is you make the patient stand on 
society step. Now, this is last slide. Last slide. Let uh, me finish. This is the last slide. Not no need of a stool. This is my clinic. Society step. He stands. One second, what he's doing? He is standing on the metatarsal. The plantar fascia is stressed. The TA is stressed. The patient will have no pain. I have yet. I have yet to give a steroid injection. Patient will walk out of your clinic without pain. So these are the few office orthopedics which I thought I should contribute to the August audience. And <laughs> you want me to say something more, Ram Prabhu? This is an important slide. Yes, sir. Yes. How to carry the patient up the stairs? This is from the fire brigade demonstration. So this is the intern. This is orthopedic house surgeon, registrars. You tilt the chair. You tilt the chair. Hold the two legs. Hold the back, and they are taking the intern up the stairs. So many stairs of Nanavati Hospital. We made them go right up to the top. Second thing, suppose there is no chair. How to carry the patient? This is from Fire Brigade, Bombay Fire Brigade. <clears throat> Very easy. Left forearm will catch the right. This left forearm will catch the right of the other person. Okay? So now you have made a chair. The patient will, you lower down, the patient will put one leg here, one leg here, and sit on that, and both the hands will be on your shoulder, and the patient will be carried up the stairs, as shown in the next slide. Very important. There it is. Thank you very two much, Two female sir. interns, two female interns, carrying an intern up the stairs in this manner. Thank you so much.